What Dude, else? you got to mirror somebody throughout the whole field. Like you're playing cover one. Is it what's harder than playing cover one and just staying in somebody's hip? And you can't give up a yard of separation. Otherwise, it's a completion. It's on so freshman. good. It's so good that white people can't even do it, Travis. <laughs> <laughs> like that's how you know it's the hardest position. They don't even let white guys try to play quarterback anymore. Like they just said, you're done. It's too hard of a position. Yeah. It's too physically demanding. Can't even That's do it. funny as hell. The cornerback is a position in the NFL where some of the fastest and most athletic players play. It's a position that relies heavily on immense forward, backward, and lateral speed, as well as anticipation and quickness. It requires one to defend opposing wide receivers that may have the speed and quickness of that of a cheetah. And there's also a ton of trash talking involved in the position, yet the last white cornerback to start a game in the NFL was Jason Seahorn for the New York Giants and he retired at the end of 2003. However, in all fairness, calling Seahorn the last white corner means ignoring the countless others with the likes of Kevin Casefarn, who started for the Bengals from 2001 to 2003, Ethan Kilmer's single impressive snap as a corner for the Bengals in 06, and Troy Apke's short stint with the Washington Commanders all had in the last 20 years. I think there was another guy that played like a year or two ago, but that's how you know that shit's hard. If we, if we all don't know him, it doesn't count. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's not also forget Patriots receiver Julian Edelman for the time he was plugged in and asked to play over 13 regular season games as a slot corner in 2011. So it does beg the question, why are there no white cornerbacks in the NFL? Running back. So before we delve deeper into this video, we need to highlight former Giants corner Jason Seahorn, who was the last true starting white cornerback in the NFL. Jason initially joined USC as a wide receiver, but moved to safety as the team already had an abundance of talent in the receiving core. It was the summer of 93, and Jason was a soon-to-be senior who was struggling to find space on the field until a little bit of stroke of luck came his way. Dennis Thurman, who was a Trojan secondary coach, accidentally walked in on Seahorn playing basketball in the gym with USC teammate Willie McGinnis. And as the story goes, this chance encounter opened Thurman's eyes as he saw the receiver show some remarkable ability on the court to the point where he later claimed that Jason was the most athletic player on the team. And this is how the soon-to-be safety got his first big break in the secondary. Jason Seahort would eventually be drafted 59th overall in the second round by the New York Giants as a safety. However, it soon became apparent to the organization early in his career that he was also capable of playing cornerback. His tremendous athletic ability, coupled with size and speed, and knack for making spectacular plays made Seahorn a very solid corner. However, a torn ACL suffered in a 1998 preseason game saw the California native decline in production as more nagging injuries soon came his way. Jason's NFL career spanned a total of nine seasons, where in total he recorded 458 tackles with 19 interceptions, and one of which was ranked seventh all time by NFL Films after Seahorn made a circus grab while flailing and rolling on the field, turning it in for six in the 2000 divisional round against the Philadelphia Eagles. That season, the New York Giants made it all the way to Super Bowl 35, getting by the Vikings in the championship game after Seahorn single-handedly shut down the best wide receiver in the game in Randy Moss. The Giants would eventually be stopped short of glory after losing to the 2000 Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl. But nonetheless, Jason Seahorn started 73 games for the Giants at corner and eventually signed with the St. Louis Rams as a safety in 2003. Oh, by the way, Jason also had a national commercial advertisement for Charles Schwab, along with renowned NFL trash talker Shannon Sharp. You pay transaction fees on your mutual funds. Your mama pays full commission. You know how to calculate a PE ratio? Injured and don't know where to start? With Morgan & Morgan, it's so easy. They are the largest injury law firm in America, with over 800 attorneys operating in 49 states while we're recovering over $15 billion for their clients. And the best part is, they've streamlined the process of submitting a claim and communication with your legal team. No more messy paperwork and meetings. With Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim without ever having to leave your couch. 
The process is easy that you can literally submit your case details, sign contracts, upload documents and medical records all from your cell phone and communicate with your legal representative via text. So you might want to keep Morgan & Morgan in mind in the event of an accident. Finding the right legal representation is as important as obtaining a police report, contacting your insurance or going to your doctors. So if you're ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. In 8 clicks or less, you can submit a claim. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Clash or Sports or dial a pound law that's pound 529 from your cell phone once again shout out to morgan and morgan for sponsoring this video so as of now there are no white corners in the nfl all 160 cornerbacks are black and for a league that is made up of approximately a quarter white you can see them cover almost every position in the game except this one so there are a few things that i believe attribute to these results but first off, there is no simple answer to this question as there are a variety of factors that could contribute to the lack of white cornerbacks in the NFL. Stereotypes certainly play a key role. White players in some quarters are stereotyped as not having the requisite speed and quickness to be able to shine at the position. So this likely prevents young white football players from attempting to play the position, coaches from placing them at cornerback, and college recruiters from recruiting them. It's a trickle-down effect that starts all the way back to when we're young and how the stereotype is so dominant that many young players likely remove themselves from the competition for spots before it even begins. For example, let's take a look at black quarterbacks in the league. And while the notion of having a black QB 20 years ago wasn't as foreign as a white cornerback, there were a lot of stereotypes associated with blacks in this particular position. Somewhere along the way, the intellectual capacity of the black quarterback somehow, some way, came into question. So much of the narrative, the, the false narrative, been is that African Americans couldn't play the quarterback position because they weren't smart enough. They didn't have the leadership ability. The fact that many back in the day believed blacks weren't smart enough or had the mental capacity to lead a team in the quarterback position just goes to show you the blatant stereotypes that was within the game of football. And this is why there were very few black QBs as teams favored white quarterbacks. Fewer black kids in peewee leagues got the chance to play QB and the same was true in high schools and colleges, hence we only saw a handful of black quarterbacks make it to the pros. This has since changed as lately we've seen an abundance of blacks in the quarterback position breaking the mold, leading teams to Super Bowls, winning league MVPs and basically just changing the whole overall perception of race in the position. Yet sometimes this process of change may take longer for some others. Then you've also got to consider the fact that with so many successful black quarterbacks in the modern game, this will translate and affect the youth as they too will try and emulate their heroes and play quarterback from a young age. And as time passes, you will see more and more coaches no longer pushing black youth away from playing QB and this is one of the main reasons why Jason Seahorn was one of the true last white cornerbacks in the NFL. The fact that he was automatically pigeonholed into playing another position until his coach caught a glimpse of him playing basketball goes to show you a lot of these stereotypes start from way back. Here's what former NFL player Kevin Casefart, who played corner all throughout his life but was asked to switch to safety after a couple seasons, had to say when pressed if he felt race had anything to do with his switch. Yeah, I felt that way 100%. I knew it. The former safety kind of initially tiptoed around the question because like many other white corners who didn't feel like they received a fair shot, didn't want to come off as a whiner, excuse maker, or use the race card. However, I think this one quote from former Washington DB Brian Davis summed it up best as he didn't sugarcoat his response when asked by Sports Illustrated. Davis went on to say, if you're a white corner, you're guilty until proven innocent. I'm not going to be politically correct about this, he warns. It comes down to this. How many white guys are effing fast enough to play cornerback in the NFL? Very, very few. It just doesn't show up often in white bodies. Even if I'm a white coach or a coach who's pulling for the white cornerback, I'm still thinking, why is he here? I don't want him. He can't run. He can't jump. He's too damn nice. That's another stereotype, by the way. Nice, polite, NFL coaches want an effing baller. Next, and this will certainly be a bit more of a controversial reason for some, is the fact that plain and simple, blacks tend to be more athletic than their counterparts in sports that are more accessible to them. In general, they're faster and taller with longer Achilles tendon and shorter calf muscle which allows them to excel more in sports that involve a lot of running. Their bodies explode faster, run faster, and have a fast twitch muscle advantage over other races. 
And you don't have to be an Olympics enthusiast to know that those from African descent dominate the 100 meters. Simply put, blacks possess an inherent physical advantage for athletic competition, hence those other NFL positions that require an immense amount of speed and quickness such as the running back and receiving position have seen white players almost essentially fizzled out in those roles. Then when you consider the fact that they have longer limbs with smaller circumferences, this translates to having a higher center of gravity compared to others of the same height. Asians and whites tend to have longer torsos, so their center of gravities are much lower. The height of an individual's center of gravity affects how fast his feet are moving when they hit the ground. And all these physical traits have led more black players to play in the position of cornerback, which is probably the most athletic position on a football field. That said, to tie everything I discussed in this video, I found an SI article about Dustin Fox who had a brief stint in the league and I think his story encapsulates all the reasons why we do not see any white cornerbacks in the NFL. Fox was a starting corner for four years at Ohio State and won a national title before being drafted in the third round of the 2005 NFL Draft by the Minnesota Vikings. However, before he even got to the league, the 5'11", 185-pound corner, who also ran a 4'4'3 at the Combine, was suddenly moved to safety. Dustin arrived at the 05 Combine expecting to see his name listed with the other corners, but instead found himself amongst the list for safeties, none of whom were smaller than Fox's 191-pound frame at the time. Out on top of that, he had a 43.5-inch vertical, which was second best amongst the cornerbacks at the Combine and fourth best among all players. So check this out. Dude had all the size, attributes, and physical traits to play the position, but everyone in the league wrote Dustin Fox off as a corner. And when he was interviewed in the article, here's what he had to say. Why didn't I come into the league as a cornerback? My measurables were better than half the corners in the league. I made plays at Ohio State, started 37 college games, and I can't even get a shot. I vertical jumped 40 inches. I'm telling you right now, I was as good as or better than half the cornerbacks in the NFL. They got the opportunity, I didn't. The NFL was great, but I always felt like I never got a fair shake playing the position because I was white. And this basically reiterates my points earlier about why there are no white corners in the league. And just think about the countless other kids who read this article and see all the barriers white players face in the position. They have to work twice as hard just to get noticed and even if they do make it to the league, there's a good possibility they could be demoted to safety. That being said, I'm sure there are countless other reasons as to why blacks continue to dominate the corner position in the NFL and if I'm going to be honest, I don't see it changing anytime soon. Unfortunately, it is what it is and unless changes are made on the youth level all the way up to the NFL, Jason Seahorn may be the last true white cornerback to ever lace it up. Guys, if you've made it this far in the video, consider subscribing as we are on our way to a thousand subs or check out one of my other videos here.